everybody, how's it going? Thanks for sticking around. So my name is Matt Tebow, and I'm from Pennsylvania. And so I'm at the airport, and I go, and I pick up my bag from the trolley, and I go outside to find a taxi. And as I step outside, I'm hit by this wall of heat and humidity. It's like someone has thrown a hot, wet blanket right in my face. And this is how I was welcomed to Saudi Arabia, where I am right now studying marine science for a graduate degree. Now, you probably don't know a lot of people from Saudi Arabia, so I'm going to tell you a little bit of a personal story of how I ended up here. So now let's transport back to the woods of Pennsylvania where I grew up. I spent a lot of time outside, lifting up rocks in the woods, looking for worms and bugs, and running around the backyard with my favorite butterfly net, trying to catch all the bugs. And when I was outside, I wasn't just an average kid, I felt like. I felt like I was Sherlock Holmes, roaming the neighborhood, searching for suspects, and learning all the different little critters and organisms that lived around me. So after many, many years of spending a lot of time outside and a lot of time in the woods, I started to build up this big mental catalog, if you will, of all the different life that lived around me. I knew where to find it, I knew what lived where, and it was great. I thought I understood the world just by exploring the backyard and the woods around me. So transport now to high school, and I have this opportunity to go explore a new place, to go down to the tropical island of Jamaica and explore the forests and the oceans around there. And now, you know, I had seen a couple National Geographic documentaries, and so I was pretty confident that I knew what to expect and what I would find down there, you know? There'll be some fish, some crabs, some different trees, but I, I'm pretty sure I know it's down there, just like I knew, thought I knew it was in my backyard. And so we went down to Jamaica, and we took a couple classes, and we learned about the different habitats, the seagrass, the mangroves, the coral reefs. And then came the part that I was most excited for, was field trips to these different habitats. And before we went out to the different habitats, our teacher, he gave us each our own little butterfly net to go out and catch these little fish and crabs and other little critters with. And I couldn't have been more happy. I was like, yes, this is fantastic. I've been training for this my entire life. I know exactly what to do with this. I'm so ready. Let's go. And it turns out I wasn't quite so ready. So the first place we went was the mangrove forest. And I don't know if everybody's been to the mangroves, but the mangrove forests are nothing like the forests of Pennsylvania. <laughs> the ground is just this thick mud that sticks to you and sucks you down, and the roots are above ground and they form this tangled mess that you have to try and crawl through, and the mosquitoes are everywhere. There's a constant buzz in my ear as I was crawling around these roots trying to find cool new animals, and there was also the occasional howl of classmates who also weren't super excited to be there at that time. <laughs> And I should clarify right now that I don't feel that way about mangroves anymore. I, I, at the time, I was a little disappointed in what I found, but now I think they're really cool. But at the time, in, when, in high school, we, we, left, we left the forest, and I was kind of disappointed because it wasn't what I expected. I didn't see the cool animals that I thought I would see based off the documentaries, and it wasn't anything like the forest I expected. And so I was kind of disappointed and a little, a little sad, I could say. But that all changed when we went out to a coral reef. And so when we drove out and I plunged in with my snorkel, I was exposed to this world that I had never seen before. The water was unlike the cold, murky water that I was used to in lakes and streams up in Pennsylvania. There weren't brown, slimy rocks as far as the eye could see. When I plunged in the water, it was warm, like a nice bathtub or a cool hot tub. And there was full of colors and shapes and life darting around everywhere I looked. There were these beautiful purple sea fans gently flowing in the current and these fuzzy rocks with tentacles that were actually living animals called corals. And there were these fish as beautiful as the butterflies that I had seen with these gorgeous iridescent blue heads and yellow stripes. And I couldn't fixate in any one spot. I was so amazed by everything I was seeing. I was looking around in every corner and it was wonderful. And then I saw a rock after swimming around a little bit and I started to regain myself and I was like, aha, this rock. This looks just like a good rock I would find in the woods of Pennsylvania. There should be some cool stuff under this rock. <laughs> and so I went and I lifted up the rock, but it was like nothing that I had seen before. The bottom of the rock was covered in these brilliant reds and pinks and oranges of sponges. There was this tiny little shrimp scurrying around in the sand with this beautiful white and red banded pattern on its arms. And there were worms, but they weren't like worms that I had seen before. These worms are fat and green and had these weird little white spines on the side. And if you touch them, they burned your hand like a hot stove, like no earthworm has ever done before. 
And so I was astounded by this amount of life. And it was around this time that I was starting to realize that the world wasn't just my backyard back home, but that the ocean was this even bigger, watery backyard. And here I was in the Jamaica looking at just a tiny little piece of it. But it was also this time that I started to learn that this amazing diversity of life that I was finding in this one ocean was threatened by a lot of different things and starting to disappear in some places in the world. Things like overfishing or pollution or climate change were negatively impacting these animals and some of them were starting to disappear. And so that information kind of excited me and instilled in me this kind of enthusiasm and passion to go out and explore this watery backyard that I was completely unfamiliar with and knew nothing about at the time. So when I got the opportunity to go to Saudi Arabia in the Red Sea to study the marine environment, a place where my research on these different animals has a chance to help save them, I had to say yes. So now when I go outside and I jump in my watery backyard, it's full of animals, but it's not the squirrels or the rabbits or the birds that I was used to. It's full of other different kinds of animals, new and exciting every time I jump in, like fishes, snappers, groupers, these beautiful little sea slugs and colors you couldn't even imagine, brittle stars and sea cucumbers. And that is why I really do love where I am in the world and I love doing what I do. Thank you.